This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by Honey and by Factor. We live increasingly in a world of cults where everything from superhero intellectual properties to Korean boy bands to electric car manufacturers all have fan bases that take things so far beyond simply just enjoying things that it's not uncommon to receive death threats for criticizing their object of obsession. Mm -hmm. But the cultiest cult for the past few years in America and beyond has been those QAnon people whose idiotic conspiracy theories are too vast and too all-encompassing to explain without going a little bit crazy yourself, mm -hmm. but they essentially believe that uh, Donald Trump and a bunch of famous dead people like John F. Kennedy Jr. have been secretly waging a war against a child-murdering, adrenochrome-guzzling, Illuminati New World Order, a.k.a. the Democrats. And while the identity of Q, the 8chan poster supposedly leaking inside information about all of this nonsense, is still technically a mystery, QAnon isn't a totally leaderless cult. At this point, the Q-pilled people who've stuck around uh, through thick and thin, as every single one of Q's predictions repeatedly fails to materialize, mostly orbit around what are essentially QAnon influencers who have picked up where Q left off and added lots of their own new lore to the Q canon. Not unlike the Bible. Yeah. Uh, the guy who got all those people to show up in Dallas and wait for the resurrection of JFK for two whole months is one example, but there are plenty of others. And like any cult, it can be pretty lucrative to be grifting at the top of that thing. Yeah. No better way to get laid and get rich than start your own cult. Yeah. So yeah, it's no surprise that apparently the Q people are getting real big into multi-level marketing. And it's honestly surprising that it took this long, considering all the parallels with these two worlds. Yeah. The exact type of person who buys into a get-rich-quick pyramid scheme is the same type of person who would hear about how uh, the storm is coming any day now, back in 2017, and just still be waiting patiently for it five years later. Both types of people suffer from uh, magical, illogical thinking, a willingness to alienate their friends and family with this new thing that they're now super into, and a complete lack of self-doubt. It's a match made in heaven. Yeah. Uh, and to explain this powerful new QAnon multi-level marketing plot twist, uh, here's the Daily Beast's Will Summer. In a December livestream to his QAnon fan base, conspiracy theorist Phil Godlewski laid out what he described as the key to their financial futures. Buying silver. The precious metal, Godlewski insisted, would soon explode in value after the passage of legislation some QAnon believers think will bring on a utopia. Income taxes would be eliminated, debt would be abolished, and anyone holding silver would become fabulously wealthy. But Godlewski didn't want his followers to buy silver from just any company. Instead, he told them to buy through 7K Metals, a multi-level marketing business and metals dealer. Godlewski and other leading QAnon conspiracy theorists have found a new way to make money from their supporters, directing them to buy and sell products for multi-level marketing companies. MLMs, which rely on new members recruiting subordinate salespeople with the original upline making money from their downline recruit sales, have previously been the domain of leggings and essential oils companies, but now QAnon leaders want in on the action. And it's good action if you can get it. This has been literally going on on Fox News for 20 years. The, yeah. The buy silver, uh, precious South, metals. One of the best South Park uh, segments from the last couple of years was the, uh, the the cycle of precious metals. Yeah. Where it's just these old people just being bombarded with ads for uh, commemorative coins and all this bullshit and buying it. And then being like, oh god, I spent all my money on this shit and selling it to the cash for gold place and it just gets melted down and turned back into the thing it was before. Yeah, and it's like, it's always a hedge on inflation. And especially right now, uh, yeah. if you, like, any channel you turn on in the middle of the night is going to have these ads, so. Yeah, it's, uh, this also has shades of the uh, Iraqi dinar uh, yeah. conspiracy, another mm -hmm. uh, sort of magical thing that, uh, there's still some true believers out there if you, if you search... Uh, dinars on on Twitter. You They're pot committed. I mean, how do you not be maintain yeah, a belief? We in talked it? about that previously, but basically, uh, pre QAnon, a, a, a very popular conspiracy theory was that uh, Donald Trump or someone it actually goes all the way back to Bush, but yeah. someone was going to revalue the Iraqi dinar, the original Iraqi currency, and anyone who had a bunch of that currency was instantly going to be rich, even though this defies like economic logic. Uh, and so people were just like, just warehouses, storage units full of absolutely worthless Iraqi money. It's so, never uh, been a better time to be a grifter. Yeah. Because... It's the age of the grift. Yeah, people just want to believe that people they People want something to believe in. It's true. We need to bring back religion. The Catholic Church <sighs> needs to come back. 
And what a great weekend to do it. Happy yeah. Easter, everybody. He is risen. Yeah. <laughs> the ultimate scam. But yeah, so looking at 7K Metals' website, their main business seems to be selling shitty commemorative coins like the ones that you'd see on the Home Shopping Network or late-night Fox News commercials. Uh, they do have some intrinsic value due to the precious metals used to make them, but they're sold for a significant markup. It's a bad way to buy metal. Mm -hmm. uh, but the prices for uh, 7K Metals are supposedly better if you become a member. Mm. And they have this whole referral system where a member gets paid if they get enough other people to also sign up and, and buy a bunch of coins. Uh, and also, the membership seems to involve some sort of monthly uh, coin club. It's like the Columbia House. Like, you can send it back, but do you really want to go through all the trouble of sending back the, uh, the coin that we charged you several hundred dollars uh, to give to you? Plus, it's going to be you're throwing your money away. Like, and you got to do the shipping and handling and mm -hmm. uh, the, the processing fees, the restocking fees. I mean, we'll do it. But yeah, um, but yeah it's, it's not the scammiest scam on its surface, but uh, most MLMs aren't. Uh, most of them, they if you look at it the way they explain it to you, you're like, okay, I mean, yeah, seems legit. Seems pretty, pretty straightforward. But uh, yeah, also most other MLMs, the essential oils and whatnot, they actually sell uh, arguably useful products. They exist at like least. Like Amway, yeah. you, can, you can clean your house with Amway products. 7K Metals just sells overpriced, like, rare, limited edition coins that look like shit. Uh, at, and they sell it as a legitimate alternative to uh, much more sound investment strategies. You could literally just invest in metals in, through the stock market. Yeah, you can. You don't need to hoard a bunch of uh, shitty coins. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you're someone who has hundreds or even thousands of followers who will do whatever you tell them to do because they are in a cult, you could presumably make a lot of money on this kind of thing uh, because you would be at the top of your own pyramid. Which, Everyone below you would not. Which they is would... why we're happy to announce the Internet Today Precious Metals Company yeah. where you can invest now and become rich beyond your wildest dreams. You're not going to want to miss out on this potentially life-changing opportunity. Mm -hmm. We will send you uh, so many pennies that we have touched. Yeah. They've got our finger prints all over. Our ass pennies. Them. Yeah. <laughs> those are those pennies have been in my ass. <laughs> uh, so, but back to this article. QAnon booster Richard Pockner. Why do these guys all have the weirdest last names? Yeah, I don't know. Who goes by the name Richard Citil Citizen Journalist online? Rose to prominence in conspiracy theorist circles in 2020 by filming hospitals as proof that the pandemic was a hoax. This spring, Pockner came to his followers with a serious message: It was time to buy silver. Like Godlewski, he had teamed up with 7K Metals to pitch his supporters on joining the MLM. Patriots are unstoppable together, Pockner said, encouraging his followers to put their retirement funds into silver. While the business relationships between the QAnon promoters and the MLM companies are unclear, both Godlewski and Pockner could stand to profit substantially if they're counted as the uplines for followers who join 7K Metals. And it continues, QAnon leaders aren't just selling silver. Scott McKay, a Q-backer who wields a tomahawk on stage and openly fantasizes about the murder of Democrats in his videos, appears at QAnon rallies across the country under the name Patriot Street Fighter. In posts on the messaging app Telegram in March, McKay urged his fans to prepare for the launch of a mysterious project called Operation Tomahawk. Revealing little about the project, he promised that he was launching an economic warfare platform that would take on liberal corporations and choke them out. We are going to have millions and then tens of millions of people participating in this, McKay declared in a video. McKay's Operation Tomahawk turned out to be Patriot Switch, another direct selling business based on multi-level marketing. This time, QAnon followers are being urged to buy their products through Patriot Switch, thereby, quote, supporting companies that promote freedom. In a veto to his followers, McKay promised that they would earn commissions by recruiting new people to sell <laughs> through the company. This is especially fucked up because uh, QAnon, there are way more people are into this than I'm comfortable with, but there is a finite number of Q well, people. That's why there is a race to milk them dry. Yeah, like, they're going to hit the bottom of this pyramid so fucking fast. I mean, and they're all, at this point, these people are only talking to other Q people, so... It's going to be like the stay-at-home moms in, like, Nebraska who are all trying to sell the same fucking Herbalife. It's like, no, I'm selling Herbalife. I'm not going to buy Herbalife from you. You should buy it from me. Yeah. Because it's just all these fucking idiots trying to sell the same shit to each other and being like, shit, but I got all this inventory. <laughs> I got a whole room in my house. The baby room is full of coins. I mean, full it's... Patriot merch. If... If nothing else, this is uh, at least some shred of a sign of uh, the impending doom of the movement because they're getting desperate enough to start hawking precious metals at each other. Yeah, I mean, it, 
you don't hear ever, especially since the Dallas thing, which was recently, but that's five months ago now. Yeah, and uh, but aside from that, like Q seems definitely on its way out. Uh, well, that's so. That's the thing is like this to me seems like the final. Yeah, the the, the final grift. And the then, grifters, they're like trying to cash out now. And I would bet money that the top level people here are within a couple of years going to be living in the Philippines or Vietnam or Well, I mean, or that's, that's where the... The QAnon... Yeah, I mean... The man who uh, allegedly, almost certainly, was running the QAnon account for most of its lifespan uh, lived you in the Philippines. A, grift where a bunch a dollar of, can go a long way. And you're done grifting a bunch of conservative Americans who you probably, if you do grift them, should be fearful of. Yeah, you should leave the country. And so, and where do you go? The place where the dollar goes the furthest and... Uh, Plenty of other reasons why QAnon yeah. people would go there. Do your own little John McAvee thing. There's yep. lots of places where you can live like uh, a despot mm-hmm. for for not a lot of. He money. was a trailblazer for a lot of reasons. Yeah, yeah. an inspiration to all of the. I community. forgot he uh, whoever was running his <laughs> his Instagram account put up just a giant Q like the day he died. And they were like, oh yeah, oh, yeah. They were like, oh my god, it, it was him. He had a kill switch where he's going to be going to be dropping all that evidence that he secretly collected over the years that he, he kept talking about. And that was like what a year ago? No, he was lying. He was he was really good at it though. Yeah, he was, he was a, a great liar. Yeah, he told a great lie. But again, it's surprising it took this long for the worlds of Q and MLMs to converge. I mean, they're perfect for each other. But let's move on now from uh, fringe politics to foreign politics. And we haven't checked in on Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro uh, in a while. But he's in the international news again. Did he get bit by a bird one more time? No animal bites, no stabbings. I don't think he's had COVID any more times since the last few times we cool. talked about it. Uh, well, he's in the news again for a pretty interesting reason. Here's the Guardian. Opponents of the Brazilian president, Jair Bolsonaro, are demanding answers after the revelation that the country's armed forces had splashed out on tens of thousands of impotence pills. Quote, We must understand why the Bolsonaro administration is spending public money on buying such large quantities of Viagra, the lawmaker Elias Vaz declared after Brazilian media reported the seemingly unorthodox acquisitions on Monday. The Navy and Air Force, which between them had reportedly bought more than 30,000 pills, offered an innocent explanation. The drug was supposedly being used to treat pulmonary hypertension. However, many were unconvinced. A report in the O Globo newspaper suggested the dosages that had been bought were generally used to treat penises, not blood pressure. Quote, How do you feel knowing that we're even paying for Viagra for the armed forces? The Brazilian singer Zelia Duncan asked her hundreds of thousands of Twitter followers. I feel impotent, one replied. Where's me, Viagra? <laughs> yeah, why, why do the troops get Viagra? I'm over here with my limp dick. My doctor said it was a supply chain shortage. Yeah. And I mean, look, they're, they're stockpiling. You, you need a strategic stockpile of a lot of things. Before COVID, it was like, why, why, is, uh, why does any country need a strate- strategic stockpile of a million N95 masks? And then we're like, oh, well, that's why. So yeah. who knows? Maybe another, the next COVID uh, makes all the Brazilian men's dicks soft. And, you can't do that uh, cool military chant, this is my rifle, this is my gun, yeah. without a rock-hard penis. Yeah. Yeah. So... And uh, look, yeah, it's a little weird for a company's military to be buying up so many dick pills um, and then clearly lying about it. Like, just say it's for your dick. Mm -hmm. But maybe maybe there's a logical explanation for it. Except literally just one day after that news dropped, more questions were raised with more dick-related news out of the Brazilian military. Uh, Here's The Guardian again. Further questions have been raised about military spending on impotence treatments under Jair Bolsonaro after allegations Brazil's defense ministry had approved the purchase of penile implants costing more than half a million pounds. Mm. Those claims followed revelations on Monday that the armed forces had forked out for more than 35,000 Viagra pills in what one leading opposition politician called an erectile outrage. (laughs) We won't allow Bolsonaro to turn Brazil into an orgy, tweeted the leftist congresswoman Vivi Rice as the disclosures sparked an online outpouring of indignation and smirks. I mean, rock hard penises. Uh, Some of the guys' dicks don't get hard even with the Viagra. So we're gonna we're gonna go in there with a little. It's it's actually quite ingenious. It's a little balloon with a. It's like you, you know remember those those shoes from the '90s where you'd you'd sort of but you'd pinch the tongue and but it would the pump air. is in your balls it's, or your asshole. Yeah, it's 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 somewhere most people aren't gonna find it. It's tucked yeah. away. But I do like that. Like American military, they're like, well, you want to go to college, right? You yeah. better sign up for the military. And Brazil's like, if you want. A rock-hard penis. 
for decades to come. Yeah. You will join the Brazilian army. You you go to a doctor and ask for Viagra in Brazil, they put you on a waiting list. Yeah. You might be dead by the time you come up. Join the military. We got all the Viagra you'll ever need. Mm -hmm. You're going to fuck for days. Yes. Uh, again, we're sure that there's probably a perfectly reasonable explanation for the Brazilian military to be buying up Viagra and penis pumps, but it's a very funny scandal to be dealing with in an election year. It's so weird. I, I forgot that Bolsonaro's only been in office for like three years. Yeah. It feels like he's been around so much longer. Well, he's now. done so much. Yeah, he really has. Yeah. Maybe he's like, I'm going to secure the female vote by having them all be very pleased by their military spouse That's right. and their penis. You decide, ladies. Yeah. So, yeah, this will likely be a topic of discussion when it hits the debate stage. And we can't wait to hear Bolsonaro try to explain why the most manly and virile presidential administration in Brazilian history is shelling out budget money to help soldiers get rock-hard erections. But, uh... It's exciting. Yeah? But yeah, they, he's up for a re-election this year. It's, uh, it'll be very interesting, because, uh... He's still got a pretty good amount of support down there. He's yeah. got a lot of haters, too. I love my haters, though. Yeah, he, get, he, he does love his haters. Yeah. He smiles at them from the hospital bed. He's just like, look at me. And he loves, he, still going. you know, despite the various attacks, he loves the humble ostrich. <laughs> he can't get away from them. He loves his animals. He loves his hydroxychloroquine. And I, I don't even think he made it to the ivermectin. He just he was just hooked on hydroxychloroquine the whole time. Yeah, well, so like Steve Irwin, but not, he's like, I love animals. Sure, they bite me. That's yeah. what they do. They're animals. They're animals. But yeah. I still like being around them. I'm not going to hold it against them. This the, is what happens. That's how, that was me and my, uh, my late uh, dog. My, yeah. Who, uh, he, he bit me so many times. And I was like, you know what? It's a dog. I don't know what made him this way, but it would be presumptuous of me to expect him not to uh, not to be violent. Yeah. I just gotta, it's my responsibility to make sure I'm the person he bites and not someone else. Exactly. But anyway, back to the craziest country of all, the United States of America. And we're proud of it too. People all over the world get themselves uh, arrested for freaking out on airplanes, but Americans are the best at it, mm -hmm. even when it means large fines, a criminal record, and being banned from the airlines. We do it anyway because yep. it is our right and huh. our duty. I mean, so what? I'm banned from the airlines. I'll just take a train on our lovely public transit system with all of our bullet trains. And, uh, oh, wait, we don't have that? Well, I guess I'll just do it. half this country does and just never leave my town. Exactly. Ever. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, even with the FAA's more recent zero tolerance approach to disruptive behavior on flights, people are still just saying fuck it and choosing to ruin their entire lives instead of just ordering a white Zinfandel and passing out until reaching their destination. It's that easy, folks. Mm -hmm. And recently, the FAA handed down its two largest fines ever for this sort of thing, $81,950 and $77,272 for two separate incidents. I would love to see the line item breakdown on those because there's a very, like, kind of irregular Yeah, they should numbers. do, like, you, you should request it, and it should have exactly the yeah. offense and the charge for it. Like a medical bill. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, here's Gizmodo explaining uh, what led to these uh, historic fines. Uh, according to the FAA, the passenger that received the $81,950 fine was on a American Airlines flight from Dallas-Fort Worth, Texas on July 7th, 2021, when she assaulted the crew and other passengers. A flight attendant tried to help the passenger up after she fell in the aisle, to which she responded by threatening to hurt the flight attendant, pushing them aside, and even trying to open the cabin door. Two flight attendants tried to restrain her, but she kept hitting one of them over the head. After the passenger was put in flex cuffs, it still wasn't over as she continued to headbutt, spit, bite, and kick crew members and other passengers. The passenger was arrested when the plane landed in Charlotte, North Carolina. That is, yeah, that's, uh, so that Dallas to Charlotte, that is a two and a half hour flight. I looked this up. I was like, that doesn't seem that far apart. That's a short flight. That is, just sit the fuck down. Yeah, these are domestic flights. You would think it would happen more often on international flights that are like being in hell. Yeah. But no, it's always on like, like the one we covered recently was like a very short, very it was like short. Texas to Burbank or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, there were, oh my God, there was one I saw on Reddit recently that was from, uh, I think it was from like Houston to New Orleans, which is like, it's like LA to Vegas. It's it, like, it, you're, you go up and as soon as you're up, you go down. It is so short. It yeah. Is. And it was like these two guys having a full on like fist fight on this flight? It's nuts. It's nuts. Uh, so it continues. The second incident involved a passenger on a Delta Airlines flight from Las Vegas to Atlanta on July 16th, 2021. 
that passenger was handed a $77,272 fine for being pretty creepy to the passenger sitting next to her, reportedly hugging and kissing them. The FAA report goes on to say she walked to the front of the plane and tried to exit mid-flight. She refused to return to her seat and bit another passenger multiple times before she was finally restrained by crew members. What's with the biting? Well, the 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 clear uh, violation here that I think, yes, biting people is terrible, hitting people terrible, but I think the big money item here is trying to open the, yeah, the, the door, door of the plane. And that's something that's like, you know, people for years have, uh, when they freak out on the airplane, they, they try to get out for some reason. It's just like a weird natural response. Yeah, it's like a primal instinct yeah. or something. But this is like... These, it's great that those doors can't open. These two ladies, uh, these two gals, they, yeah. they, they mixed it up. They got the kicking, the biting, the screaming, the yelling, the punching, the touching, and yeah. the door. Mm-hmm. It's a... Uh, they, they, they I got do the have whole some, gauntlet. I do have Achievement some, uh, unlocked. <laughs> some, like, uh, I guess I understand more. There was that flight recently that had, like, four landing attempts, and they got stuck in New Jersey, and they wouldn't let them off the plane and because there was no customs agent there. Yeah. And so they're like, nope, we're just going to wait here, and then we're going to actually try to make that landing in JFK. <sighs> and everyone's like, I have to get the fuck off this plane. Like, at least let them out, like... Find a place in the tarmac and just be like, get outside, get some air. My worst flying experiences have been when, yeah, when something happens to delay the flight for a long period of time, you're stuck on the runway, and because of the way planes work, they can't run the AC, so it's just like hot as fuck inside yeah. the plane. And you're, you feel trapped. Yeah. There was one where I took like a full two hour nap and I woke up and I'm like, oh God, we're still here. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. So anyway, the FAA does uh, say that ever since they started pursuing legal action against any passenger who assaults, threatens, intimidates, or interferes with airline crew members, unruly behavior on flights has gone down by around 60%. But looks like the incidents that are still occurring between those cracks are no joke. Yeah. These people are going for gold. And it's also interesting that both of these record-setting penalties were achieved by women. They broke the glass ceiling... The mile-high yeah. glass ceiling. Yeah. There's, uh, you know, there's still so many glass ceilings for girl bosses to break. And it's it's always heartwarming to see that when it comes to terrorizing passengers and flight crew on airplanes, women have really, uh, you've come a long way, baby. Here's a Virginia Slim. Yeah. Karens, a menace on the ground and the sky. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But in other transportation news, self-driving cars have been tested on the streets of various U.S. cities for a couple of years now. And in some cases, they've even reached the point where a human safety supervisor isn't sitting in the front passenger seat. It's just an empty car that you can hail for a ride to and from a limited number of places where the uh, autonomous car companies feel extremely confident that nothing will go catastrophically wrong. Yeah. Uh, seeing an empty car driven down the street is still pretty damn surreal, though, and that's especially true if you're a traffic cop <laughs> trying to pull the car over for a moving violation. But that's exactly what happened recently on the streets of San Francisco, and honestly, it is surprising that it took so long but it was so worth the wait for the video that was included in Which this. we can't show. Oh, we can't show? Is it's it like... like, yeah, it's one of those... Like, well, it is funny. You yeah. should find it on your own. Find it. Here's USA Today. License and registration. The first words many police officers used when pulling over a vehicle weren't applicable last week when San Francisco police pulled over, or attempted to pull over, an autonomous vehicle without a person inside. A video that has gone viral shows a San Francisco police officer saying to his partner that there ain't nobody in it. The vehicle, a self-driving car without a steering wheel for the San Francisco-based company Cruise, was being pulled over for driving without headlights at night. The Cruise car's digitalized system, however, determined it was being pulled over for going a different speed limit. Once the officer confusingly checked the vehicle and went to talk to his partner, the vehicle took off through another intersection at a seemingly more acceptable speed before being pulled over again. A self-explanatory YouTube video outlines for police officers how to interact with the vehicles, noting that they have audio systems that respond to police sirens. So yeah, the, like I said, the video of this is awesome. It's like they're being punked. It, it like, looks like the car is like, nope, bye. Yeah, the car's like, oh god. Uh, so yeah, there's... <laughs> it, it, it literally looks like it, the, it's running from the cops. Yeah. And I saw this on like the Today Show earlier in the week, and they're like, you're not going to believe what happens. And I was like... Please tell me the cop pulls out a gun and shoots the driverless <laughs> car. But uh, no, it just That'll takes happen, off. That'll happen, though. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, this video is licensed to Viral Hog. Eh. Yeah. So 
And we don't ever get that money, but yeah. we can't use it. So we we would we'd have our channel shut down for showing it to you. So we'll just have to link it. Uh, now, to be fair, they did say the company said that the car was adjusting its position for a safer yeah, interaction with the yeah, police it was, officer because it, it had stopped. Yeah, it stopped at first, and then yeah, it pulled over like to, more to the side. But yeah, it's it, for like it was like fifty or hundred for like feet, two yeah. seconds there. It looked like the car was just like. All right, bye. Well, see ya. Yeah. <laughs> Now's the perfect time to take off while the cops are out of their cop car. Speaking of the autonomous shit, I finally saw a first person, like someone did a drone delivery from a Walmart that's like testing it. Yeah. I don't know what, I don't, I don't think it's in America. I don't know what country it is, it's in, but uh, it, it. Do they not use like those FPV drones that's just like, woo? <laughs> it's like a plane drone and it looks like a oh. Call of Duty care package. It comes wow. down in a little parachute. That's so funny. I remember when they first teased that. It was like seven years ago. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that'll be cool, I guess. It just, it, it's a low-flying, like, ultralight, yeah. plane-looking drone, and it drops a care package for you. Like, this woman in the video, she got, like, some energy drinks and, like, a piece of, like, a, some random food item. And it just, like, comes down in a little parachute and tumbles, and then you go pick it up. It's the, we've reached new levels of laziness. Never well, foreseen. That's what's... Specifically about this, it's only for the suburbs. Like, yeah. no one is picking up a package. This doesn't work in a city. Yeah, I mean, in their original pitch for Amazon Air or whatever, like, way back, like, it was, they were pitching it mostly for, like, rural areas, like, where, like, property lines are, like, one acre or more. Yeah, you, for this, you like, have we, to have yeah, an like, acre. Like, if a gust of wind comes, we need to know that it's still probably going to land on your property somewhere. Yeah. Um, also, there was uh, that video, I think it was, like, last week, where one of the actual like driving robots, which I saw in Austin for the first time when we were in Austin, I saw like one of the delivery, delivery robots. Oh, the little ones, like the that just go on the streets by themselves. I did not see one. Uh, but this one, there was a video where uh, like a, a a subway thing was open and it just drives straight into it. <laughs> just <laughs> oh, and then it starts a, an alarm starts sounding because it's fallen. So it's like whoop whoop whoop. What was that uh, a couple years ago? Like a security robot just committed suicide by like falling into a fountain. Yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> Please kill, kill me. me. <laughs> so look, we're still in the fun stage of autonomy. Oh yeah, I'm having a blast. Cars running from cops, drones, uh, delivery drones falling into open sewer holes, stuff like that. Real, yeah. Real comical shit. Slapstick, but it's safe. No humans harmed. Yeah. Anyway, we've got the headlines half of the show coming right up. But first, this episode is sponsored by Honey, the easiest way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. We all shop online. We've all seen that promo code field taunting us at checkout. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button appears and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that site. And if Honey finds a working coupon, you will watch the prices drop. You can also get Honey Gold. I got 70 some, I had like $70 worth of Honey Gold for the past couple of years. Yeah, you get points every and time you use it. And I got a, a discount, an automatically applied discount on uh, a, a major clothing retailer yes. for a jacket that I bought. So it's great. It always gives you a little something at the end so you don't have to go searching every time. It works seamlessly. Yeah, I'm, it, uh, I'm moving. I'm going to have to buy a lot of like furniture and stuff. Great so. for great for the big box home yeah. improvement stores. Yeah. We I'm can't say the names. Hoping to save some money. Uh, Honey doesn't just work on desktop. It also works on your iPhone too if you've got one. So you just activate it on Safari and you can save on your phone on the go. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting our show. We would never recommend something we don't use. So get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash weird. That is joinhoney.com slash weird. And this episode is sponsored by Factor. Factor makes it easy to eat clean, 24-7, with fresh, never-frozen, prepared meals that are so delicious you wouldn't believe they're actually good for you. Save time with chef-curated meals delivered to your doorstep from Factor, eliminating the hassle of grocery shopping and meal prep, and not to mention cleanup. No dishes to wash here. Each Factor meal arrives pre-prepared and ready to eat in two minutes. That's even faster than ordering in. And Factor tackles the tough stuff, too, so you and I don't have to. Their registered dietitians and expert chefs work hand in hand to create meals with nutritious ingredients. And with more than 29 meal options each week, we haven't even gotten bored yet. Factor even knows our preferences. I've been trying to eat more vegan and veggie stuff, and this this is perfect for lunch because I don't want to like have to cook a bunch of stuff. Yeah. And uh, their meals are actually delicious, and it's a great way to uh, stay on that kind of uh, diet, whatever particular one you're 
focusing on. They also have keto meals. Uh, they also have low calorie options. They also have cold pressed juices, smoothies, energy bites, plant-based bars, extra protein, veggie sides, and more to keep you fueled and focused all day long. Head to go.factor75.com slash weeklyweird120 or just click the link in the description below and use code weeklyweird120 to get $120 off. That is code weeklyweird120 at go.factor75.com slash weeklyweird120. Get that $120 off. Now into the weirdest, wildest headlines from around the world for this week. Central Florida man pretended to be DEA agent for Wendy's discount, police say. <sighs> If you're, if you're gonna impersonate a cop, you gotta set your sights higher than this. Yeah. No, no cop would eat here at Wendy's. This guy's gotta be lying. LA cops have the very expensive tastes, I've noticed. They're always like going to like fucking Earth Cafe and shit. I'm like, wow, these guys, they must be getting paid well. You're you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome, officer. But yeah, yeah, this guy, I guess he'd been showing up at this Wendy's for like a year, being like, oh, uh, you forgot to put the the DEA yeah, discount. I forgot, forgot to put the police discount. And they're like, oh, well, well show us your badge. They're like, well, actually, I'm, I'm undercover DEA. Here's my badge. Don't look at it too long. Yeah. And finally, after he tried this, like, several times, they, they called the cops. And, uh, yeah, it turns out uh, not DEA. So now he's uh, he has committed a crime. Uh, all, all in the effort to get a, like, 10% discount on a, on a fucking fast food item. shitty uh, yeah. Wendy's burger. I'm addicted Great to Frosties. Time. What? Look, you laugh, but have you tried the Wendy's chicken sandwich? I'd put it right up there with the best of them. Yeah. For, the Frosties are good. I like the Frosties. I don't think I've eaten at Wendy's in at least a decade. It's just like, I've never lived close enough to one. There's one close by here, and I remember getting it, uh, I, it's gotta be months ago, but it was like, fuck, it's late, and it's the only thing open. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I've never... I had a lot of Frosties when I was a kid. And uh, so maybe the nostalgia will bring me back one day. Maybe. So, anyways, Florida man arrested after hiding live alligator in his truck, deputies say. If he would have just told us the alligator was there, it wouldn't have been a crime. I don't even know if the alligator was the crime. Yeah. I'm unclear on that. They found, like, guns and meth and, like, uh, uh, expired registration and shit. Yeah, they found the live, maybe they found the live alligator and then found a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. I think that was it. But yeah, I'd, like I was like, oh, what? Yeah, Florida all places, like, yeah, you should be able to just have an alligator in like your truck bed. He might not even have known the alligator was in there. I mean, they do have uh, minds of their own. They if kinda... it had rained, they'd be like, oh, a new body of water. Let me get yeah. right in the back of that truck. Mm. Mm. So, yeah, I hope this alligator is okay. Or not. They Co can they can stand up to a lot. They yeah, they can handle it. Yeah. Florida rejects dozens of math textbooks over alleged references to CRT. Critical race theory. Yeah, we're uh, so yeah, we've already just a few months in. We reached the point where they are rejecting math textbooks for apparently uh, trying to brainwash kids into being uh, guilty, feeling guilty for being white or some shit. Uh, I have my doubts about this. A lot of people have their doubts because it's math. Um, yeah, my theory now, my working theory, and this is brilliant. Critical Elliot theory coming up. My, yeah, it's my theory, and it, this is brilliant but evil, if it's true, is that this is a brilliant way for uh, Ron DeSantis and other Florida politicians to collude with the textbook companies and be like, oh, it's a shame we found critical race theory in yours. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to go with these other guys who uh, also happen to have donated to my, my re-election campaign. We're gonna have to go with their math textbooks instead, because here's. Uh, they got the CRT in it, so that's too bad. I mean, Rick Scott, the old governor of Florida, uh, yeah, also did some, uh, well, colluding with companies that were uh, very, very corrupt. Yeah, yeah very, it's upsetting. Wait, that was he, it? No, actually, I think he like ran one of the companies. That, yeah, no, uh, he did like some. I don't remember the details. It was, in, of it. It was something in healthcare. Yeah, he did yeah. some like straight up corruption, and like now he's a senator. It's yeah, fucking wild. Yeah, but uh, yeah, the, the, the critical race theory shit is, uh, it's going places. The, it's it's CRT, it's grooming, it's yeah. like all these like hot new marketing tactics for Republicans that you're seeing because it's a uh, yet another election year, and uh, people are sticking to it. It's like uh, what was it? Uh, I think it was like Jack Probasek. Is that how you say Jack his name? Jack Prilosek. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, Mr. OTC. Yeah. He uh, 
you know, obviously like a bunch of other Republicans right now, came out against Disney. Yeah. Like, uh, but he... He made he had, that shirt with the... It just says groomers in the Disney font. I'm like, why would someone buy this? But he literally had gone to Disney and had like his yeah. family was posting pictures. Like he wanted to get Recently. one last ride in. Yeah. And then he was like, all right, now that I've gone and I'm good for a couple of years, fuck them. Yeah. Uh, there's another one. Another one of these grifters, uh, Jack... Or uh, Dave Rubin. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, like he's he has uh, canceled his Disney Plus subscription like six times in the past two years, and then like a month later he'll post about some Disney Plus show, and then a couple months later he's canceling his Disney Plus subscription again. Hmm. Have my doubts about whether you are actually boycotting something or just performatively uh, talking about boycotting it. Well, it's just so hard to give it up. It, they, they give you a great bundle with the ESPN and uh, you can't Hulu. beat it. <laughs> Hulu, Disney Plus, and ESPN it's, brought me back. It's a hell of a library. It is. <laughs> uh, teacher would rather be redeployed to Iraq than go back to the classroom. And not for the, the CRT grooming stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, this guy just works, I guess, <laughs> I guess he works at a school for, uh, it's like a, a school they send the kids to after they've been like uh, kicked out for behavioral problems at yeah. uh, the normal public schools. So it's just, uh, it's, or it's sort of like being a teacher at prison. And this guy's just gotten the shit kicked out of him by students uh, multiple times. He's not, he doesn't want to go back. You throw it on the list of reasons why teachers are quitting in uh, large numbers. And you just, know, I don't have to do this. This fucking sucks. Well, it's just like there was an article recently where it's just like, I make more money now as a bartender and have absolutely zero stress. Yeah. No, that's uh, the only people that really ever consistently manage to stay teachers are uh, people married to the breadwinner of the family. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the stress will uh, also take them out of the field because it's not always financial. Yeah. I mean, they, they get into it because they love kids. They love like, kids and love educating. And they're like, oh, my husband's a lawyer, so it's fine. Like, I get to, I get the joy of uh, helping these kids, uh, you know, learn and grow up. And then, like, wait, this fucking sucks. I'm getting, like, accused of being a pedophile, uh, accused of uh, brainwashing children. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to talk about colors. I brought up Pete Buttigieg, and now I'm getting sued by one of the children's parents. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this sucks. Yeah. Fuck this shit. Yeah. John Hinckley Jr., who attempted to assassinate Ronald Reagan, to play sold-out New York concert. Okay. Yeah, he, he reappeared on the scene. A little over a year ago, mm -hmm. he 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 was uh, the last major, the biggest and last case of someone successfully pleading insanity, because mm. he was like legitimately so insane that he didn't realize what he was doing. Uh, they as soon as he uh, successfully did that, the all the laws around that were changed so that uh, basically no one would ever be able to get an insanity plea ever again. Yeah, but yeah, so he was committed for like thirty years, got like. A gradual conditional release and then finally last year he was allowed to have social media and go online and he's been posting his uh his his covers of like bob dylan and beatles songs and he's on twitter he's selling his paintings yeah um and yeah people can't get enough this john hinckley jr he's he's playing a, a whole tour of the u.s now he, i don't know if he's coming to la but he's playing new york and chicago it was like the uh the person that was the basis of that movie party monster Got oh, released yeah. and then just wanted to be like, yeah, I'm just going to start promoting New York City underground clubs again. Yeah. I think that guy died, actually. Oh, no. Since then. But I'm not entirely sure. I, yeah, it was, I it think was I funny when, that. yeah, he got out after 20 years and, like, people were showing him, like, what Twitter was. And he's just like, uh, this, uh, this is literally my first time seeing a Seems pretty smartphone. awesome, though. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to start promoting clubs again. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah. Do what you know. Yeah. Uh, GOP lawmaker says homeless people should look to Hitler for inspiration. Yeah, and for this, we might as well just... Uh, Play the clip. And I want to give you a little history on homelessness. 1910, Hitler decided to live on the streets for a while. So for two years, Hitler lived on the streets and practiced his oratory and his body language and how to connect with the masses, and then went on to lead a life that got him in the history books. So a lot of these people, it's not a dead end. They can come out of this, these homeless camps and have a productive life, or in Hitler's case, a very unproductive life. I support this bill. Thank you. Wow. So yeah, uh, look, if you're gonna if you're gonna choose to be homeless out there on the streets, um, you know, here's a story about a guy who was also homeless once who overcame his obstacles. Uh, 
that man, that man was Hitler. <laughs> you know, he was homeless and look at him now. Well, he's dead, but he became the Fuhrer of Germany. Yeah. So you can do anything. You could become the Fuhrer too. Yeah. I don't want to hear any excuses. I want, yeah. to see, I want to see you getting on that grind set, trying if, to become the Fuhrer of Germany. If Hitler, the worst person in the entire <laughs> world, can do it, anyone can. <laughs> Literally the personification of evil. If he can do it, why can't you? And it's like, ironically, fucking like, post-World War I Weimar Germany probably did have uh, a lot more benefits for the homeless. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a, I don't know if that for a fact, but I have a, I have a hunch that it was, uh, it was probably easier to be homeless in Germany in the 1920s than uh, in the United States right now. Mm. In, in not every way, but in some ways. Critical Elliot theory. Yeah. Yeah. Gun teacher tells black students to lick chicken grease off fingers. This was a, this was a guy given like a concealed carry class in Las Vegas. And I, I, I mean, I'm not a gun person, so I, I didn't know there's this whole world of like, uh, you know, comedy slash gun training seminars that you can sign up for. I didn't know for. about that. I, I, I know there's racism. It's like comedy traffic school. Yeah, comedy traffic school. So it was like, you. it was like, yeah. So this dude, he's just like, all right, but we know the races are different, right? You like, for the black folks, you got different, different things you need to remember when you're handling your gun. Like, first of all, turn it 90 degrees. And he has like this just caricature of this gangbanger, like cartoon with a uh, fucking <laughs> bloods scarf on his face. And he's like, make sure you lick the chicken grease off your fingers before handling the gun or it's gonna slip out. And just uh, a bunch of other racist shit. It's like all on camera. It's like, Jesus fucking Christ, dude. And uh, yeah, he's of course, he's like, well, I'm being canceled for doing comedy. I also made Can't jokes. Say anything he's like, I made jokes about white people too. I said like, put down the, the Coors Light before shooting I'm like oh wow yeah same thing yeah well did cancel culture get him or is he still teaching his gun class i'm sure he's doing great he's probably doing better than before probably got a lot, a lot of new students he's not afraid to tell it like it is <laughs> they do eat chicken <laughs> jesus no one no one ever talks about how they eat fried chicken it's funny you're impersonating the gun teacher yeah not Everyone likes fried chicken. It's fucking delicious. It's amazing. All the all the like black culinary stereotypes are so fucking weird. It's like, yeah, watermelon tastes really fucking good. Fried chicken tastes really fucking good. Have you like barbecue? Any <laughs> keep naming them, Ellie. Like, all African American cuisine is delicious. Fuck off. It is very good. It is good. Yeah. Anyway, Maryland man with 124 snakes in his house died of snake bite. Autopsy finds <laughs> open and shut key. <laughs> Well, we have this dead man here, and count them, yes, 124 snakes. We're going to have to send this down to the lab to find out this man's cause of death. Could have been anything. Mm -hmm. Could have been uh, completely unrelated to the 124 venomous snakes he was keeping in his home. But just like Bolsonaro and that emu, I don't think this guy would have blamed the snakes for, the, for biting him. You no, know, it, it was a risk I took when I put 124 venomous snakes in my house. This was inevitable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But hey, the times we had... Before things went south. Live in life to the fullest. Yeah, there's nothing like sharing a house with hundreds of snakes. Would I have, you know, so what? I would have lived an extra 10, 20 years not having 124 snakes? Yeah. Boring. Sounds like an empty life. Yeah. No snake, no take. Exactly. That's what I say. Cops hunting man accused of smashing plates of whipped cream into people's faces. <laughs> there's a clown on the loose again. This was like a thing in cartoons and stuff for a long time and yeah. like, just like, media because like, it's a it's the pie but it's like it sells yeah, it on camera it's just, more yeah it's just whipped cream but like yeah it is a thing Pies it's are like, expensive yeah it's like if you do this if anyone did this in real life it'd be like what the fuck is your problem you fucking asshole is this a whipped cream and yeah i guess this person was filming youtube prank videos or yeah, something of course but yeah didn't they do that isn't this like a popular way to like uh protest politicians in europe yeah because like it's not assault if it's funny right that's right yeah that's the law Dun dun. In Europe, they're You're a lot more lenient. Yeah. Well, it was funny. It was pretty funny when he yeah. <laughs> when he took the cream out of his eyes. Yeah. And it was still all covering his mouth. It looked very comical. It was funny. Yeah. You're free to go. Mm -hmm. Mortified man wins four hundred and fifty thousand dollars after his bosses force a birthday party upon him. This rules. Yeah. This guy he he had explicitly told 
his bosses, who I guess loves having birthday parties for all their employees, he told them, he's like, I have extreme anxiety. Mm -hmm. Do not have a birthday party for me. Just let me do my work. I'm great at my job, aren't I? Just leave me the fuck alone. No birthday parties. Don't put me on the spot. We read you loud and clear. And they're like, all right. Oh, We're going to go nuts for this guy's birthday. When we surprise him with his birthday, yeah. he's going to change his mind. Uh, and then they surprised him with it. He had to like leave the building because he was hyperventilating too much. Uh, and then they fired him. They're like, ah, oh, we just don't feel like you're a team player. You kind of ruined the vibes in the office when you uh, weren't happy about our surprise birthday party for you. Uh, and yeah, it turns out that was wrongful termination and they owe him nearly half a million dollars. So good for him. Good for fucking good for him. There's yeah. a lot of people like this. I, I've, I've known people over the years that like, and yeah, in our younger years, we would def definitely do it on purpose knowing that they didn't yeah. like it. It was like at a restaurant, be like, it's his birthday. And they do the whole fucking happy, happy I, birthday. I, does anyone like that? Uh, the people that uh, go to Mexican restaurants and order fajitas love it. Yeah. But even then, it's like your friends. Like with coworkers, it's like that's a weird middle ground where you're like, I don't want these people knowing anything about me. Yeah. Like, just let me do my job. Stop trying to make this a family. Like that's the worst part of the American workplace is uh, the idea that it's something other than what it is. It is a place where people do work. It is not a family. That's just a trick they, they pull on you to make you work harder and longer than you actually should be out of a uh, false sense of obligation that they've planted in your mind. Yes. Don't let us down. A real, uh, a real family, uh, you can't get fired from. Yeah, you can. I mean, but you got to really try. Yeah. Anyway, that's our show. Uh, if you want to watch our most recent episodes, we did a, a news dump about uh, multiple people being arrested for running a bootleg Club Penguin site. Yeah, Club Penguin sends, sending people to jail. And as I predicted... So many people who watch our show uh, were very active in Club Penguin and have plenty of their own anecdotes about it. Yeah. Um, so, oh, and it turns out someone did mention uh, that Club Penguin rewritten. They did take, it was still like the base game, but they took it above and beyond and did create their own assets for it. Oh. So there was Where's their the own. Crime? Well, because it's still using the base. Like the actual copyright is the game and the characters, so. No, they should have just changed the name. It's like if you put Mickey Mouse into a different pair of clothes, it's still Mickey Mouse. That's not Mickey Mouse, that's Ricky Rat. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and there's also our re most recent Tech News Day where we talked about uh, the cool new electric gaming bed that you can live your entire life gaming in bed. Yeah. Never get out of bed again. Watch both of those videos, subscribe to the channel, leave a like and a comment, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.